Hello, I'm Fran. And I'm Hannah. In this Freshwater Habitats Trust video, we are going to take you through the basics for completing a pond habitat survey, with hints and tips to help you complete the more technical elements of the form. Pond habitat surveys are used to help interpret plant and invertebrate data, and to calculate a variety of pond metrics including habitat suitability index scores for great crested newts, and SIM scores for pond quality. You'll be asked to complete a pond habitat survey form for each pond in your allocated survey area, and every year that you survey the pond. The best time of year to undertake the survey is during the summer months between June and September. You don't need any previous experience to undertake a pond habitat survey. For an average pond it will take you about half an hour to complete the survey in the field and another half an hour to add other information at home. But allow more time if you haven't had much practice or if you are visiting a particularly large pond. To do this survey you will need a clipboard, the pond habitat survey form and something to write with. You don't need any special equipment, but it is a really good idea to take a camera to record elements of the pond which you might want to refer to later. We recommend that you print off a satellite image of the pond, as this can help to calculate variables like pond area and percentage cover. Before we left home, we started to fill in some of the pond's details using the computer. Websites including Grid Reference Finder or Ordnance Survey Maps are really useful for finding out these basics. We've downloaded Google Earth, as this has many useful tools that you can use to help you. On the survey form, we've put in both our names, today's date, the pond grid reference, which we take from the middle of the pond, and the pond name. Using Google Earth, we have found the pond altitude, and we've used the Draw Polygon tool to find the pond area. It's really important that we measure the total area of the pond, in other words, the pond's maximum size as if it were completely filled with water, not where the water is on the day that you survey. We call this the winter water line. It's an important marker because most of our pond habitat variables are based on the whole pond, not just where the water is on the day we visit. Satellite maps are often a very useful tool for finding the winter water line, as you can identify the change from terrestrial to pond habitat as a change in colour. But they're not so good if the pond has a lot of vegetation or if the pond is under the trees. For ponds like this, you can make a rough estimate using the computer and then check your calculation in the field. We've also used the ruler tool in Google Earth to draw a one kilometre radius from the centre of the pond so that we can work out the number of other ponds within the one kilometre of our survey pond. Remember this is the number of other ponds within one kilometre, so don't count the ponds you're surveying. In this case there are more than 12 ponds so we can just tick the box. We can also complete information about whether the pond is in a protected area, like a nature reserve, by consulting the online map. And lastly, we can give the pond a location score for great crested newts by consulting the map. Remember to look after yourself and protect the pond you visit from disease and invasive non-native species. Check, clean, dry. You should always follow our health and safety advice and make sure you apply biosecurity protocols before you visit a pond. You can find out more information on our website. We're ready to begin the field part of our survey, so let's go. Tune in to part two for the next instalment.